One instance of the Saturn myth that can be verified, with the help of a small telescope, Saturn is in chains. Instead of solving anything, this fact has created a problem. It demands a solution. How did the ancient Greeks and Romans know that Saturn is encircled by rings? It is strange that this question was not asked before. The existence of these rings around Saturn became known in modern times only in the 17th century, after the telescope was invented. They were first seen, but misunderstood by Galileo and understood by Huygens. If the myth did not by mere chance invent these rings, the Greeks must have seen them. The last case could be true. If the Greeks or some other oriental people possessed lenses adapted for the observation of celestial bodies, or if the rings around Saturn were visible to the naked eye at some time in the past, today they are not visible without magnifying instruments. There are cases of exact observations by the Chaldeans which suggest the use of some accurate technical means. These means could consist of a sort of astrolabe like that of Tycho de Brahe, who made most accurate observations of celestial bodies without the help of a telescope. Also, Copernicus, prior to Tycho de Brahe, made all his calculations of the movements of the planets before the telescope was invented, but neither Tycho de Brahe nor Copernicus saw the rings. The statue of Saturn on the Roman capital had bands around its feet, and Macrobius, in the 5th century of our era, already ignorant of the meaning of these bands, asked, but why is the god Saturn in chains? In the Egyptian legend, Isis, Jupiter, swathes Osiris. Saturn. The Egyptian appellative for Osiris was the swath. In the Zend Avesta, it is said that the star Phistria, Jupiter, later Venus, keeps Perico in twofold bonds. Saturn is encircled by two groups of rings, one larger and one smaller, with a space in between. To see this, a better telescope than that used by Galileo Galilei or that used by Huygens is needed. The twofold structure of the girdle was first observed in 1675. The rings of Saturn were known also to the Aborigines of America before Columbus discovered the land. This means also before the telescope was invented at the beginning of the 17th century. An ancient engraved wooden panel from Mexico shows the family of planets. One of them is Saturn, easily recognizable by its ring. Nor were the Maoris of New Zealand ignorant of it. One of the great mysteries connected with Saturn is the still unanswered question of how the ancient Maoris of New Zealand knew about her rings, for there is evidence that they did have a Saturnian ring legend long before the days of Galileo. In the myth it is said that Jupiter drove Saturn away and that on this occasion Saturn was put in chains. If these words mean what they say and are not a meaningless portion of the myths, in a dream at least there are no meaningless parts, then the knowledge of the ancients about the rings of Saturn could have been acquired because of better visibility. In other words, at some time in the past, Saturn and Earth appear to have been closer to one another. Originally, I assumed that the rings of Saturn may consist of water in the form of ice, but since the ancient lore all around the world tells that it was Jupiter that put these rings around Saturn, I considered that they might have some other components too. Since the 1960s spectroscopic study of the Saturnian rings has confirmed that they consist mostly of water in the form of ice. The rings of Saturn are referred to by Aeschylus Eumenides, 641. He, Zeus, himself cast into bonds his aged father Cronus. Moreover, it is not true, neither, that Saturn is in chain. Neoplatonists like Proclus and Tamayo by Festigere sought a philosophical or mystical meaning in the tradition also, and yet the king of the gods, the first and eldest one, 
is in bonds, and they say, if we are to believe Hesiod and Homer, and the other wise men who tell this tale about Kronos, Augustine refuting those who asserted that the Jewish Sabbath was held in honor of Saturn wrote a bunch of stuff in Latin. <laughs> Eta paters nostri launch fuera de Saturnises patinas, quam vis pro tempore profiatio sabati vacation e motive evident. Contrafaus to Manichim XX 13. These chains with their double fetter, Zoilius dedicates to you, Saturnus. The shrines to Saturn in Roman Africa portrayed the god with his head surrounded by a veil that falls on each of his shoulders in a way reminiscent to the planet's rings. Ancient yeah. knowledge of Jupiter's bands and Saturn's rings. Classical journal. Yeah. And then we got uh, ancient knowledge of Jupiter's bands and Saturn's rings. Kronos 2, 3, 1977. When Galileo first saw the rings in July of 1610, he thought them to be two satellites on either side of Saturn. And this is what he also announced in his Sidereus Nuncius, the planet Saturn, A. Alexander, 1962. Huygens. System of Saturnium, 1659. Saturn too is represented with his feet bound together, and although Perius Flaccus says that he does not know the reason, Apollodorus says that throughout the year Saturn is bound with a bond of wool that is set free on the day of his festival. The Osiris cult and the designation of Osiris idols in the Bible. The Zend of Vesta, Tristria, the bright star, keeps Perioico in twofold bonds, in threefold bonds. A third ring around Saturn was observed in 1980. Velikovsky also thought that mythic representations of Kronos with his body encircled by a snake may attest to a memory of the rings of Saturn. The planet Saturn shown in an ancient woodcut reproduced in F. Maurice, London, 1800, Volume 7, and described by the author as encircled with a ring formed of serpents. Tammuz, who represented the planet Saturn in Babylonia, was called He Who Is Bound. Ninib, who was also Saturn, was said to hold the unbreakable bond. The observation was made by G. D. Cassini. Regarding the process of formation of Saturn's rings, Velikovsky thought it might have been analogous to the formation of a disc-like ring of gaseous material around some stars in, 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 in binary systems, as described by H. Friedman in Science 181. Gas enters into a Keplerian orbits and accumulates in a disc somewhat resembling Saturn's rings. In August 1965, Tobias Owen, writing in Science, reported that the reflection spectrum from the ice block gave the best match to the absorption observed in Saturn's rings, but that the most likely alternatives would be ices of methane and ammonia, both known ingredients of the Jovian atmosphere, methane being also in the composition of the Saturnian cloud envelope. As early as 1947, Kuiper, the atmospheres of the Earth and planets, 1949 concluded in the basis of spectral measurements in the infrared that the rings are covered in frost, if not composed of ice. Saturn's rings. Although H2O is a major constituent, the spectra reflectivity indicates the presence of other materials.
Astronomers had long been aware that there would be an alignment of the planets on March 10, 1982, where Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto would be on the same side of the Sun, within an arc 95 degrees wide. But no effect could be expected, as the tidal forces of the other planets affecting the Earth's crust are negligible, even at the planet's closest approach. In the book The Jupiter Effect, the authors sought to partially sidestep objections by considering the effect of the alignment on the Sun, and hence on the solar wind, which in turn is known to affect weather on the Earth. Atmospheric conditions on Earth can alter the speed of its rotation. The effect on the Sun would also be quite small. However, and in fact, there had been an even closer alignment in the year 1128 without any incident. There was some influence by the planets mentioned above with the high tides calculated as being about 40 micrometers higher than normal. In April 1982, Gribben and Plagman published a lesser selling book, The Jupiter Effect Reconsidered. In it, they theorized that the effect had actually taken place in 1980. Despite the lack of planetary alignment then, and that it had triggered the volcanic eruption of Mount St. Helens. Every once in a while, something like this pops up. Millions of people will eat it up, and it will turn out to be nothing. The ten notable apocalypses that obviously didn't happen. In 1974, John Gribben and Stephen Plackman wrote a best-selling book, The Jupiter Effect. The, the key word there is best-selling book. I wouldn't doubt it for a minute if earthquakes and volcanoes weren't electric. Everything is electric. But there was that third ring on Saturn in 1980. The Arrival of the Waters Following the seven days when the world appeared to be ablaze in the radiance of a thousand suns, the deluge started. First, according to the Hindu account, vast clouds gathered which overshadowed the entire world. These ominous clouds rumbling, shooting lightning, overspread the sky. They were as vast mountains. Some were dusky, some crimson, some white, some brilliant in hue. Other sources describe them as yellow or azure or red. Loud in roar and mighty in size, they fill the entire sky. They were friends with lightning and meteors and thunderbolts. Then, rumbling aloud with lights, they poured torrential streams thick like chariot wheels. They rained with a sullen roar, inundating the three worlds, ceaseless downpour of torrents. And then there were seen on all sides the four oceans, engulfing with tempestuous waves the whole surface of the earth. All creation was smit by the luminous, dense floods. In the beginning of the deluge, the nova in the sky shone through the splendor of the illuminated skies and through the sheets of rain, ever increasing in intensity. The biblical expression, the Lord sitteth upon the flood, was an apt description of the blazing nova above the waters of the deluge. It has a Babylonian counterpart in the title of Tammuz as Belgersu, Lord of the Flood. The Nova blazed terrifically, but soon the light became diffused. The shadows grew ever dimmer. The world that was all splendor and light turned gloomier and gloomier. The outpouring waters grew ever thicker. The clouds of dust darkened ever more the sky. And finally, the drama that was taking place on Earth went on in darkness. The deluge was not a peaceful, though abundant rain, filling the earth with water, rising ever higher. Ancient sources give a description of the deluge that differs greatly from the pageant of showers pouring from above on peaceful land and peaceful sea. Skandapurala in S. Shastri. The flood legend in Sanskrit literature. The Babylon expression in the wailings for Tammuz. The shining ocean to thy perditions has taken thee. Babylonian literatures. Paris, 1913. 